I think I might be in too deep. Let all within the wilderness be reverent before him. Lift up your heads. I spent five weeks in a legitimate cult on the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft. It's a crazy story, so let me explain. A while back, I received a strange invitation to something called the Midnight Council. 25 other players also received this invitation. It requested that we leave all of our items behind and venture far out into the wilderness together and set up camp using only the materials around us. We would partake in ritualistic ceremonies and develop our own self-sustaining civilization where everyone contributed. At first I thought it was a joke of some kind or maybe a trap to get us all killed, but I eventually decided, why not? I agreed to participate and let's just say I had no idea what I was getting into. So today, I'll be showing you how I spent the past five weeks in a legitimate Minecraft cult. And when you get this many 2B2T players together, not everything will go according to plan. When I wasn't getting indoctrinated by a Minecraft cult, I was at the gym, where I always use my Raycons. For any activity, they've been my go-to earbuds. The new everyday earbuds have an improved look and feel by using optimized gel tips. They're comfortable and they will not budge. Trust me. Not only are Raycons water resistant, but they can be charged wirelessly. Raycons offer 8 hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life. They start at half the price of other premium audio brands, so no wonder they have over 50,000 five-star reviews. I've found them to be very useful, so to get your own pair, click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com fitmc to get up to 15% off your order. It's a great way to support the channel, and thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. So let me tell you how I spent the past five weeks in a legitimate Minecraft cult. After accepting this mysterious invitation to the Midnight Council, I was given instructions. From the server's spawn region, on my alt account, I had to make my way to a portal far out in the nether, and once there, I was to abandon all of my items and await further instructions. It sounded really sketchy, but of course, now I was intrigued. The portal location was way off the beaten path, so I quickly hopped on a nether highway and made my way out. After branching off from a tunnel and going through open nether, I eventually found it, though it did take a few hours. After going through the portal, I quickly found myself in a large taiga forest with no signs of civilization. I was quickly messaged by one of the event organizers, a longtime player named Hermeticlock, who then revealed what was actually going on. I had been one of 25 people invited out to these woods for a month-long event, a parody of something in the real world called the Bohemian Grove. That's right, for 130 years, some of the most influential people in society, such as United States presidents, artists, musicians, and businessmen, would gather in the California wilderness for a few weeks to socialize and partake in secret ceremonies. Many of these rituals would take place in front of a giant owl statue, which itself is rarely photographed. It turns out Hermetic Lock had actually been a guest at the Bohemian Grove recently, and was inspired to make a Minecraft version of it. Now I was really intrigued. I then had to follow the full set of instructions. Step 1. Make my way to the encampment. I was told to set my brightness level as low as it could go, and was given a custom texture pack to install. It was suggested that we be in vanilla with no mods or cheats, with the exception of free cam, which I was allowed to use for filming purposes. I was then instructed to walk through the woods until I found the encampment. After wandering around aimlessly for a while, I did eventually find it. Many of the players that had arrived earlier than me had already built up the area, so I took a look around. Just like the real world counterpart, there was a giant owl statue in the center of the camp. So there were no doubts I was in the right place. Step two was to carve out my own space. Using only the environment around us, every member of the Midnight Council was required to build a small home. It had to include a source of warmth and light, a jukebox with at least one music disc inside, and a gathering space for all members, so I quickly got to work. I found a suitable location right next to a path that had already been laid out. I harvested some wood so I could start making basic gear. 
There was a community chest in the area that had a little bit of cooked food in it, as well as some spare netherrack for a campfire. This would save me the hassle of having to wait for food to grow. While near the camp center, I found the totem pole, a giant tower of signs left by all the guests that had already arrived, including YouTubers and other influential players. But it had grown so tall that I had to tower up just to leave my sign. After placing it on top, I continued my task. I went underground to mine out materials that I would need for my home. Coal, cobblestone, and at least one diamond for the jukebox. I also happened to get lucky and find a music disc in a dungeon not too long after. I had what I needed, so I returned to the surface and began building. I used an old cottage design that I've used on the server in the past, and after chopping down a few more trees and smelting some glass, the home was looking cozy. It had a heat source, a jukebox with a music disc, and behind the cottage I built a small meeting area for guests. The tasks were completed. I had carved out my own space. Now step three was to attend the opening ceremony. A few days after my arrival, everyone had made it to the camp, and we were instructed to meet at the Owl Statue at midnight. Everyone began gathering in the common areas. It was cool to see so many players put aside their differences on the most toxic Minecraft server in existence and come together like this. We were led to a shack nearby containing robes and owl masks that were to be worn during the ceremony. Now I understood what that texture pack had been for. Once we were properly dressed, we took our places and the ceremony began. All ye assembled and all ye gathered, listen closely, pay attention, and recall the ancient story which propagated the rights of this sacred place among the trees. Fools, 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 when will ye learn that me ye cannot slay? Year after year ye burn me in this wilderness. Send from the bleachers across the river and lift your flints and steel and join us in the burning of common woe. By the occupants of this esteemed midnight council, I call ye all assembled to come burn this common foe. The ceremony lasted around 30 minutes, but once it was over, we were instructed to burn the owl statue's outer lair, revealing a stone core underneath. And with that, the midnight council had begun. Immediately afterwards, everyone socialized, signed books for each other, and even grabbed a few drinks at the bar. After the ceremony, everyone was given a few weeks to complete their next task, which was to provide a service or contribute to the camp in some way. It could be anything from creating farms, making repairs, and so on. I had to figure out what my contribution was going to be before the closing ceremony would take place in a few weeks. After thinking long and hard about it, I came up with an idea. At a lot of my previous bases, I had always built an auto pumpkin pie farm of some kind, so I decided that I would build an updated version for the camp. I went around gathering resources as my design would require a decent amount of redstone components. I found a nice open spot on one of the pathways and began working. The pumpkin and sugarcane portions were quick to make, but the issue was getting a chicken. I hadn't been able to spawn any through eggs, and the chickens I did find were not cooperating due to some server lag that was happening. But with patience and some luck with another egg, I managed to get the entire thing up and running. And I had used logs and planks to help it blend in with the environment. Mission accomplished. The camp was really coming together, and if you looked at it from above, it was starting to look like the real thing. Even though this was an obvious cult, I was shocked to see everyone working together peacefully, and all using items and materials taken directly from the land, nothing from the outside world, and no duped items. I was actually enjoying myself, but out of 25 of us, all it took was one person for that peace to come to an end. Now, who this person was at first remained a mystery, but one of the members of the Midnight Council, Verl, had noticed that his mansion kept getting burned down. After rebuilding it each time, it wouldn't be long before it was burnt down again. There was a rule at camp that any time there was a thunderstorm, everyone was to log off to prevent all of the trees and wooden structures from burning, as fire from lightning can sometimes survive in an unloaded chunk without getting put out by the rain. Verl's mansion was going up in flames too frequently for this to be a work of lightning strikes. It was suspected that someone at the camp was doing it intentionally. 
wanting to keep the peace, everyone agreed that they wouldn't point fingers, and Vero would build a glass roof over his mansion and keep his account logged in to try and catch the perpetrator in the act. This actually worked, as one evening, an account named Nightmare Blunt, who had no associations with anyone at the camp, showed up and started griefing. Not just Verl's mansion, but everything. He also leaked the coordinates of the camp in the public chat. Luckily, one of our basemates, R. Fresh, was online and managed to kill the attacker, though he broke the camp's rule of using outside items to do so. The base had been heavily damaged, and instantly the question started. Who had leaked the coordinates to the camp? Clearly this wasn't a random base hunter, and through some basic research, the Griefer account only had two hours of playtime on the server. This was a deliberate act, but instead of resorting to pointing fingers, we were all given two choices. We could either leave the camp and return to the outside world, or stay and attend the closing ceremony despite knowing it would be dangerous. We only had a few days to decide, but my choice was clear. Even though my home and pumpkin pie farm had been destroyed, I wanted to stay until the end, just to see what would happen. The evening of the closing ceremony came. The owl statue and surrounding areas had been repaired, and Verl had managed to rebuild his entire mansion again. Pretty impressive. But once everyone had gathered, the closing ceremony began. First, special awards were given to individual players that had met certain requirements at camp. I was given an award for being the person to complete the camp checklist with the most accuracy, though I think this was just a creative way to say that I had been lazy. But once the awards had been given out, Hermetic Lock, the leader of our special little cult, dropped a bombshell on us. The destruction of our sacred lands was not an act of malice, but rather a sacred rite that has been practiced by societies since time immemorial. The threat level midnight was me all along, and at the 11th hour, the threat was executed. It turns out that he had been the true culprit behind the grief of the camp. He had been testing us to see who was willing to stay despite the danger. It had also been a test of character to see how we would react, and if we would turn on our fellow brothers and sisters. But we had passed the test. I was just surprised no other griefers had shown up since the cords had been leaked publicly. Our final task was to destroy our own camp and burn down the forest, symbolizing a return to nature. Together, putting aside any outside differences, we took flint and steel and set the land ablaze. Once everything was said and done, we gathered at the Owl Statue one last time and partook in a ritual sacrifice. I'm not gonna lie, being in this Minecraft cult was some of the most fun I've had on the server in a long time. Though a disclaimer, joining a real cult is a horrible idea, so don't do it unless they have cool owl masks or they are a YouTuber named FitMC and you aren't subscribed yet, but those are the only exceptions. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this bizarre video, so take it easy, FitFam, and if you plan to play, stay alive out there.